How good is Arjun Erigaisi? Let's have a look at this game to figure out. This was played at the Champions Chess Tour Finals and Arjun had the white pieces against Lake Wong Liam. Liam is an amazing player in this format, uh, rapid play, and he actually dragged Magnus Carlsen all the way till the Armageddon. So here is Arjun who started off pretty poorly, losing three matches, and then he beat Mamed Yarov, then he beat Anish Giri, and now he's playing against Lake Wong Liam. Uh, and let's have a look at this game because not only is the game quality wonderful, it also teaches you some important concepts in the London system from white. So Arjun is playing white and opens with d4, knight f6, bishop f4, the London, d5, e3, e6, knight f3, c5, c3 he plays. Uh, generally people uh, like going knight d2 here, but Arjun goes c3 it's fine queen b6 queen b3 bishop e7 <clears throat> and you will see that black is taking a strategy here by the way h3 interesting move yeah it's kind of waiting move because you may want to develop this right now on e2 maybe it will go somewhere else and the strategy for black here is to play bd7 and this is what Wesley So has started doing. He puts his bishop here and then places his knight on d7. Bishop e2, rook c8. And I like Arjun's next move. You can think about it here. He did not castle. He went g4. Very nice. Just gaining space on the king side. Suddenly Wesley, uh, Liam goes for some change in plans. He could have continued with uh, bishop c6, but it may become a bit too slow here because white is already moving forward with g5, h4 and uh, wants to play here and knight h5, bishop h2, later on the knight could get misplaced. So knight c6 and now g5 was very much possible and should have been tried perhaps knight e5 was played. Here I believe that Liam should have taken knight e5. If with the pawn, then you can go knight e4, black is fine. And if you take with the bishop, the position still remains uh, equalish. So he went bishop e8, and now Arjun pushed forward with g5, knight d7. He played his knight back to g4. He could have also taken here bishop d7 and then kept pushing on the king side. But he went knight g4, a6, h4. And when I see this, I think to myself, how is this attack any useful? You know, because at any given point, black can exchange the queens. And without the queens, how can an attack work? And this kind of broadened my horizons. Because firstly, it is true that white cannot keep the queens on the board. Like queen c2, then cd, ed, and knight d4 with, you know, this pin here. So... Basically, you have to keep the queens here and black can trade. But what I realized is that it's not really a mating attack as such more than a positional bind that white is trying to create with h5 here. And now takes, he should take with the bishop, but he takes with the knight. And now take, take and a very key move here, h6, g6. And now look at these dark squares. Terribly weak, especially the f6 square where Arjun gave a check. Now the king has to go to h8 because the h7 pawn has to be defended. And now notice how this pawn and this knight take away squares from the king and h7 is a huge weakness. dc5 was played, knight a4 and here was an important moment in the game. I think uh, Arjun sort of became a little bit complacent perhaps. He should have played the move either c4 or e4. His idea is to take, take and knight d5 when the rook is sort of trapped because rook d7 is met with knight b6, rook c8 also with knight b6. So it's a fork that is incoming. Uh, also c4 has the same idea. And if you were to take, take and do something like this, then already the knights are just too strong. And by the way, this is a very pretty mate. 
with the two knights. Um, okay, Arjun went here, knight c5, king b1, knight d7, and here once again e4, very interesting. But Arjun now took a con controversial decision. He took on e8, getting rid of the very important light squared bishop in the uh, sort of very important, I would say, not because it's important for black's position, but it's a bad bishop. So it remains to be answered as to why Arjun took here. But sometimes things are very concrete and Arjun just felt that it's not what goes out of the board that's important but what remains on the board in this I think I'm still better that's what he would have felt f4 and here I think f5 would have been nice because then you can put your knight here uh, but he played f6 rook f1 takes takes king g8 and now black starts to fight back c4 I like this next move knight de5 takes takes knight b3 so this pawn is attacked and it's not so easy to defend it because you know knight is coming here and the main thing is that you never want this knight to reach the f6 square even knight c4 and that is a massive blunder try to think why is this a huge mistake white to play yes bishop takes c4 Pawn takes knight c5 and now the knight is coming from d7 to f6 and it's game over. I like how Arjun played this very slowly. Check a3. All his moves just point to one fact that he is having a lot of time here, especially because of his knight so beautifully placed. Rook takes. Rook d1 and the threat is to mate here. Check. Uh, I mean it was impossible to stop it. So perhaps taking here was bad. Should have gone rook e1 but I think you can even take or go rook f4 keeping the rooks. But you can even take and play rook d7. Just slowly maybe rook get the king out. Try to play. Uh, this is permanent. This king locked in. So. It's a long term edge. Rook g5 here. Check. Check. And he won the rook. And he won the game. So a very very strong performance here by Arjun. Really like that game. One more game of Arjun that I really loved. Is his first round game. I don't want to go too deep into it. But I really like the accuracy with which he played here. Uh, so this is. Game number one where Arjun was black. It was a slow defense. And this is all Arjun's prep. D5, ED, bishop c1. D5 is hanging. So you go queen b6. Now f4 is perhaps better. He goes g4, logical, t4, knight e4, castles. And it looks scary. But look at this. First knight f6. Now the queen cannot take because rook f8 is queen trap. So I had to go back. Now knight d5, h5, he goes knight b4, and now rook a8. So that when this happens, sorry, f, hg, fg, the rook is opened up on this file. So that's why this other rook was brought. And what I like now is that this move king f7 is safe in such a position. He understood it very well, and here came... Uh, an interesting move c4 bishop c2 and now how do you trap the queen not rook uh, here bishop g5 and with bishop g5 the queen has no squares to go to well the position was still pretty complicated because he got a rook and a bishop especially here with this formation white seems to, to be doing very well but arjun's every move was the best move now a5 bishop e3 maybe not the best rook d4 rook d1 was best and it's around equal but bishop e3 rook e8 bishop d4 knight d3 good move rook h7 rook g8 
bishop e3 allows queen e5 threatening mate in one so bishop d3 cd so d3 rook d8 bishop d4 and this was the critical error of the game till here the position was fine if you went rook h1 takes rook h d1 black should white should be fine but he went bishop d4 check 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 and b4 winning the piece and arjun eventually went on to win this game as well beating uh, liam with a score of two and a half half is no joke it's an extremely tough feat arjun now moves to nine points and is in fourth position in the tournament which is uh, pretty amazing if you think about it and he is uh, going to play pragnananda in the last round which will be a mouth-watering encounter that we are all going to follow. For now, this is Sagasha signing off. Uh, do send your best wishes to Arjun in the chat, in the comment section. Bye-bye.